This is the Bible Ranger, and today we're going to be talking about the sixth seal of the apocalypse, heavenly signs, made simple. Very quick recap on the seven seals. Seal one, the white horse, and that was basically the Antichrist, and don't be deceived. Seal two, the red horse, that was about war and rumors of wars and taking peace from the earth. And of course, look at the videos before this one to get the details on this. Seal three, that was the black horse, which was famine. Seal four, that was the pale horse, basically the green horse, um, and that was pestilence. And number five was about under the altar, the, the saints under the altar. And this one is going to be about the heavenly signs. Very interesting and very scary. And that's the one we're going to be talking about today. So let's go. All right, the sixth seal. Now these verses will be from Revelation 6, 12 to 17. And this is verse 12, compressed. When Jesus opened the sixth seal, there was a great earthquake, the sun was blackened, and the moon was blood red. Verse 13, the stars fell from heaven as unripened figs from a fierce wind. Verse 14, the heavens departed like a scroll and rolled up, when rolled up, every mountain and island moved out of place. Verse 15, all kinds of people from the very rich and important to the lowly will hide themselves in caves and rocks. Verse 16, they beg the rocks to kill them to avoid the second coming of Jesus. That's what it should say. And verse 17, because the day of wrath has come, and who will who and who is able to stand? All right, the sun and the moon. Now, this verse about the sun and the moon and earthquake is what I call a pivot or an anchor verse. When interpreting end times prophecy in the Bible, you can it can be like assembling a one colored puzzle piece um, where you need to find the corners and the edges. That's very important. Get those in there first, then you have a higher success rate of actually completing the puzzle. Now, I don't believe one person has all the pieces using this analogy here. We need to look at at the other pieces of other people. There's nothing wrong with that. And let the spirit lead us. OK, um, the closer we get to the event of this actually happened, the clearer it's going to be. And the Bible actually says that to Daniel about seal this to the end. I believe the sun and the moon and the earth and this combination happens only once now. When you interpret the Bible other ways, like in a pre-trib or a mid-trib or something, you might have to use this combination once again because it does repeat itself. Now, in Matthew 24, verses 29 to 31, um, it talks about the rapture and the second coming. And I'll read this because it's pretty important. Verse 29, immediately after the suffering of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from heaven and the powers of heaven will be shaken. Verse 30. Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in earth, excuse me, in heaven, and all the tribes of the earth will mourn. They will see the Son of Man arriving on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Verse 31. And he will send his angels with a loud trumpet blast, and they, and they will gather his elect from the four winds from one end of the heavens to the other. Now we're just putting that together with the Revelation chapter 6. All right, so now I need to explain this a little bit about the lunar and the solar eclipses because you'll see it in a, in a minute. Something most students of the Bible prophecy, they, they don't catch is this. Let me explain the difference first. A solar eclipse is when the moon, like in here, the moon is in between the earth and the sun. And this is the one we normally are familiar with, where for a split second, the sun disappears. All you see is the light around it and the sun actually looks black. While in a lunar eclipse is the one down here where the earth itself is in the center between the moon and the sun. And you end up with this thing here is a reddish type moon. So it's either you can either get at this moment either one or the other you can't get both okay that makes sense you can't have the moon at the same place where the earth would be that's just ridiculous however in this prophecy coming up you're going to see where they are both affected you both get the black sun 
and you get the red moon, which like, obviously this is something that is not normal. Something else is occurring here. I'm going to try to explain it. Now let's talk about the falling stars. Now the falling stars most agree are meteors that are going to hit the earth. Okay. Now how they come to the earth, some people disagree. There's a couple of theories on this one. Okay. Now meteors of unknown explanation. They just, they're just out there. And at this time here, um, the meteors are going to hit the earth and, and it's going to be a lot of chaos on the earth. Now this particular person here, Gil Richard, I believe his name is, he's um, what they call a, a independent researcher. Okay. He doesn't get paid for it. Okay. You know, and in the past, I, I, he has free graphs and, and, and explanations out there. He, his dates have failed in the past, but I think he has worthy things in there that, that we can at least look at it. Okay. He has this theory where there's a planet that he calls seven X because it's seven times the size of the earth. Okay. And it goes around the sun, but it has a long elliptical orbit. And I think it's something like 300 and something years that this happens. Let's continue. This planet X. As this planet, this planet X or 7X swings around the, the sun, um, it has a, a near miss with the earth. Okay, it doesn't hit the earth, um, but it brings a tail of space junk with it because this particular planet has, a, has an iron core to it. It's very, has a lot of iron in it. And once it passes the earth, it has a tail of it. And this tail is the junk, the space debris that it brings with it. And the earth will go in between this seven X planet and the debris. And this is the debris that's actually falling on the earth. And I mean, it is interesting. It makes a lot of sense. And it's just a possibility, which none of us really know. Now I saw a few years ago, a secular program. It could have been I don't know, one of these history channel type programs, which normally doesn't have good stuff because it's usually anti-Bible, but it supported this type theory about this planet. Now, this planet, they also had a name for it. They call it Nabri. I think is mentioned in, in old archaeological findings and, and they, support, they support him on this. Not him particularly, but they support this other planet called Nabri. Might be saying it a little bit wrong. Also, um, Mr. Gill here, he actually offers this explanation and, and he ties it with the Bible, which I found very interesting. He finds that, that every 300 and some years it's coming around the earth. It actually has caused, um, stories in the Bible to occur. Of course, God is the one that puts all this timing together. He gives all the glory to God. He's a Christian man. But like I said, his, his timing has failed on it, but he believes that this is the reason we had a, a drought on the earth in Joseph's time with Egypt, seven years. And then sometime later with Joshua, um, he believed that the, um, that there was a, the long day that Joshua had is because this planet caused a slight tilt towards it and, and caused the, 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 uh, the day to be long. And there's actual, since the Chinese have like a 5,000 years of history, they actually have in their records, uh, a long night since they're the opposite side of the earth. And that's pretty interesting. And then there's another story in the Bible that talks about Heke, um, Hezekiah's uh, sundial where it actually goes backwards for a time period. And he says that was because of planet 7X also whipping around again after so many years. That's pretty interesting. But I just want to share that with you. All his stuff is free. Just, you know, be careful of people setting times. All right, so mountains and earth moved. Now this would have to account for something massive to happen to the earth, correct? Now Gill's 7X planet um, could have answers to this by basically passing by the earth close enough what attracts the earth itself because that planet there, 7X planet, is mainly iron and the earth having a south pole and, and north pole would tilt towards that planet being attracted to the magnet, the magnet of the earth being attracted to, to the metal. And this would tilt the earth in a weird access. And there is, there is a verse that seems to, to support that. Of course, this is just a theory, but it's just listen to this. Always good to listen to everybody's thing. Now the Bible says that the earth in those days will wobble like a drunkard. It will fall or let's say tilt 
and never recover. Also in 2 Peter 3.13, it says that um, there will be a new heaven and a new earth. So obviously the fix will be after the thousand years of Christ's reign and he would fix this problem. But that's what it says. So it does seem to support it. It's just, just a theory. So this would be kind of the, the big shift, the big tilt that would be severe enough to cause this major mayhem in the world. All right, hiding in caves and mountains. Now, this is just a basic survival instincts for everybody. I mean, who wouldn't if they had a chance? In some areas, they don't have mountains, right? And they don't have caves either. But those who have it, okay, they, who wouldn't hide in caves for this, all these things happening to the world? But all types of people, from the great to small, they're going to be looking for a place. Um, the very rich, they have... They have Cheyenne, Cheyenne Mountain and things like that where they literally have cities, um, bunkers in mountains with tremendous amount of food and important people go in there, Congress and, and, and all that. That would serve them well there, but it's not going to help them at the, at the end. Um, and it says in the Bible, they're going to escape the wrath of God. So the wrath of God, there's something there that's going to take a little time. If it happens that quickly, it's they don't have a chance to get there. Something has to warn them to get there. That's why I think in the future, I'll, I'll talk about the, the rapture and the second coming. And I believe there's a little time gap in between them, but it's the same period of time. You know, that, that gap of time, I'll explain in the future. But it gives them time, maybe weeks, um, maybe a month or two, I don't know, where they, get, they can get to, to the hiding places and actually feel secure, but they're actually not. So here comes the second coming of Christ and he brings the wrath with him. If that wasn't bad enough already, what's been happening to the earth? So please don't waste any time. I mean, in Luke 12, 20, today your life will be required of you. And I say that because none of us know. This is a verse that says that God, you know, somebody who's bragging that he's done well with his life and here God comes, bam, and his, his lifetime is done. And you know, Myself having a family member, you know, just pass away. I mean, we don't know when it's going to happen. So, you know, please don't take it for granted. It feels like we all feel like we're going to live forever, but we don't. So, you know, please don't waste any time. And nothing matters more than your salvation with the Lord and your everlasting life with your soul. All right, so please repent. You know, confess your sins to the Lord. Let Him be the Lord of your life and follow Him today. Now, if you found this video to be helpful, you know, partner with me, um, not with money, you know, but just simply just, you know, give it a thumbs up and just sharing it. You know, please subscribe if you haven't done it. It really doesn't take that long. And we'll spread the word on this. There's a lot of junk on the Internet. Um, uh, just people come up with the craziest theory. I try to show my verses. Um, and if you have any questions or anything that you disagree with, um, you know, please comment to it and I'll do my best to see if I can fix any errors. I definitely strive not to have any. But this is the Bible Ranger, keeping the Bible simple, yet rich in content. Thank you very much.